Recent military interventions, including the NATO airstrikes in Libya in 2011, in order to protect civilians, have led scholars to ask again whether the use ad bellum may influence the use in bello. It has been suggested that the notion of military advantage, which belongs to use in bello, is dependent upon the legal basis for the military intervention which belongs to use ad bellum. The notion of military advantage is a very important notion under use in bello. It plays two main roles. Firstly, in determining legitimate targets, and secondly, in assessing the proportionality of civilian destruction caused by an attack. This concept will be examined in depth in the chapter on the conduct of hostilities. At present, a brief explanation will be sufficient. Firstly, the concept of military advantage is a crucial component of the definition of the notion of military objective. This is important because only military objectives may be subject to attack. What is a military objective? It is an object which contributes to the military capacity of the attack states and whose destruction gives a specific military advantage for the attacking state. It is necessary for both elements to be present for the attack to be lawful under IHL. Secondly, the notion of military advantage also plays a role in assessing the proportionality of an attack. Proportionality is one of the key concepts of Aisha and considers the question of whether the collateral damage caused by an attack to civilians or civilian objects are excessive or not. An attack will only be lawful if it does not cause excessive harm to civilians. Damage to civilians or civilian objects will be considered as excessive if they are out of proportion with respect to the military advantage anticipated from the attack. Generally speaking, the greater the military advantage is, the more the collateral damage is authorized under Ius in Bello. Under Ius ad Bellum, military interventions may be authorized to pursue specific aims, for example, humanitarian aims. This was the case in the 2011 intervention in Libya, which was authorized by the UN Security Council Resolution 1973. The objective of this resolution was the protection of civilians against threat of attacks. It has been argued by some commentators that in interventions like in Libya, the military advantage of an attack under use in Bello should be defined by reference to the specific objective of the intervention authorized under Ius ad bellum, rather than in relation to the general military and strategic aim of defeating the enemy. Let's take the example of the destruction of a bridge. The destruction of a bridge may contribute to defeat the enemy and thus be legal under Eichel in classical armed conflicts. However, proponents of this restrictive view would argue that the destruction of this bridge would only be legal under IHL if it contributes to the humanitarian objectives of the military intervention. This position is certainly commendable in some respects. Its purpose is to give a stricter definition of the notion of military advantage. This may reduce the number of military objectives which may be targeted and the extent of collateral damage to civilians and civilian objects that are permissible. However, this restrictive view raises serious issues. Firstly, a requirement that objects be qualified according to the underlying objective of the military intervention may introduce in use in Bello requirements which are vague and subject to different interpretations. As in the case of the intervention in Libya, 
which led to the fall of Gaddafi, it may be very difficult to establish the real purpose of the intervention. In that case, the protection of civilians or regime change. Secondly, while attractive, this restrictive view runs against current practice. In that regard, you may refer to the statute of the International Criminal Court and to the document which defines the crimes for which the court is competent. This document provides that the notion of military advantage, and I quote it, does not address justifications for war or other rules related to jus ad bellum. So the notion of military advantage must be clearly separated from any consideration pertaining to jus ad bellum. Thirdly, under the proposed restrictive view, the military objectives, which could be targeted, and the collateral damage, which could be caused, would potentially vary according to the belligerents. Use in Belo would be more stringent in that respect for state whose military intervention would pursue a humanitarian purpose under use at Belo. This would break the symmetrical application of use in Belo between belligerent states and create advantages to aggressor states. This would be dangerous for the functioning and development of IHL. In any case, military operations conducted in a framework of a foreign intervention will have to respect both use in bello and use ad bellum. This would mean that although the destruction of a military objective would be legal under use in bello, it may be illegal under use ad bellum if it don't, did not fall within the specific mandate of the intervention. The operation, the operation will therefore have to be considered as illegal under international law in general.